right? And, well, my name is Ryan. This person's name is Caroline. And this other person's name is Calvin. And we are doing a presentation that's half of it is on video and the other half is on paper. And we only have one paper because we left the others in the car. <laughs> and so, and so please turn off your cellular devices if you haven't already, please. Because, yeah, it's kind of annoying. So. My name is Caitlin Ann Johnson. I'm sorry I cannot be with you today. I am headed to a speech and job on you. I am sending this video as a part of our introduction of our bioscience presentation for Teton Green Team. We have chosen to do a video presentation as a way to show you some of the things that we've learned in bioscience, Montana. Our presentation covers three areas of science, neuroscience, infectious disease, and metabolomics. So sit back, relax, and watch our video. It's been a great journey and we thank you all for being a part of it. Holy cow, guys, guess what? What? I got a text from my mom. Guess what she said? What? We're going to the post office to pick up stuff. You guys want to come? What kind of stuff? Stuff stuff. Like, like really awesome stuff. Like mail stuff? No, just stuff. Yes, it's letter stuff. What else do you think they put in a post office, huh? So are we going? Yes, maybe. Only if you guys want to go. Otherwise, then I'm just going to sit here and let her do it. I'm leaving you guys. So Good. Yeah. Let's go. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Are super taster. So we have four different test strips to control sodium, benzoate, and thyroid, and PTC. So let's try the control first. Don't touch anything. anything. <laughs> Wait, I taste paper. <laughs> okay, so you guys need to take it. I'm not touching yours. Put it in the garbage can. Oh, I also need to get a drink. Put it in there nicely. Okay, God, our next one so is sodium benzoate. You guys say same thing? It's so sweet. It's pretty sweet. Good for you guys. <laughs> what? Get air. Caroline, put it in. Okay, so next one is diarrhea. Mm. <coughs> uh, I'm not eating that. <laughs> it tastes okay, like bad. paper, you guys. No, it it's doesn't. You, <coughs> you are a terrible taster. Now PTC. Yay. Okay. Mm. That is definitely good. Uh. So our results are mine. I could taste nothing. It tasted like paper. The only one I couldn't taste was the control. Um, I tasted everything. Um, like because paper tastes like paper. Uh, sodium benzoate tastes like sweet, and thiourea tastes like bitter. 
and PTC but, is really so good. So are you oh, guys super tasty? Yes, because my tongue is really strong. It can lift cars and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> your task is to see if you're sensitive. <laughs> I am sensitive, so. Um, I'm way more sensitive. <laughs> Anyways, so our, these are our homunculus masks. My mask and Caitlin's mask have a lot of blue in the cheek area, and we think that is because we both have sinus difficulties, and maybe we are less sensitive there. My mask has a lot of pink right under the eyes and on the tip of the nose. And I have blue on my chin and on my and green on my chin too. I got yellow all over it because I think I'm ADHD. No, I am ADHD, but we don't know for sure if that's the reason why it's yellow. The three things we would like to do more research on is that Hannah and Caitlin are sisters and they had similar homunculuses. Um, people with sinus, sinus infections and people with ADHD. Okay, today we are learning about mosquito ringtones. <laughs> okay, so the thing is to test your hearing with mosquito ringtones. So, yeah, I read it. Okay, so is this 22? Okay, this is, this is everyone. Everyone should be able to hear this. If you can hear this, and from now on, put your hand up, okay? Okay. Is this 22 kHz? This is 8 kilohertz. I can hear it. Okay. And my pen won't work. Get, you keep on tossing it this way. 10 kilohertz. Yeah! 12 kilohertz? Yep. It's so noisy. 14 kilohertz. Yes. 15. Yes. 16. 17. Seventeen point four. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Oh, I heard that one also. 18? Can hear yeah, that? but that's like the last one I can hear. 19. Um, I'm not lying. And I am done. 20? X, X, X. Can you hear 20? Yeah. Nope. I'll have hearing damage of some type because we can't hear uh, the amount of hearing we should be able to hear if we were 18 and younger. And my reason is because of stuff. Calvin? Please. I shoot too many guns. That's probably mine and uh, some of our vehicles are pretty loud and also chainsaws and power machinery. So. Yeah. That's true too. We're, We're hearing, hearing protection! protection. <laughs> know your bacteria. <laughs> okay, so. Match the bacteria to the description. Okay, let's put the descriptions out on the pay table. I mean, not the table. Okay. Streptococcus. Someone hand me. Oh, okay. This is streptococcus because it has strep throat. This kid has strep throat. This is salmonella. As you can see, it says here, gram negative rod, motile by flagella, produces hydrogen sulfide, does not ferment lactose, and catalyst positive. Okay. As you can see. Mine is E. coli. It's gram-negative rod, ferments lactose, and is catalyst positive. Um, it's normal in the GI Florida. Animal sources of infection and transmit via focal oral or <laughs> fecal oral. I had Staphylococcus aureus. 
which is a gram, which is gram positive clusters. It's catalase positive. It's coagulase positive, and an anti antibiotic resistance is a problem, which is MRSA, meth methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus, and it colonized colonized skin or pharynx and immune system responds and causes inflammation and an abscess develop, development entry into blood via ruptures in skin. And the other one I found was Staphylococcus epidermis which is gram positive and it grows in clusters. It's catalase and coagulase positive and it's normal flora, normal flora on the skin and it forms biofilms and adheres to medical device. You got another task. Okay. Okay, let's see. Our task is to demonstrate the proper ways of streaking the plates. Okay, we can do that. Okay, so we have our TSA plate, we have our bacteria, and we're going to take a swab. Nice, clean, sterile swab. Never been used before. Not even a person's nose. Okay, and we're going to take this. Be very careful. You don't want to stab yourself in the eye. Get it full of that bacteria. Get it soak up all of it. Well, not all of it, but close to all of it. Then close the lid back up so you don't spill the bacteria all over your mom's nice carpet. And then you take your nice TSA plate. But before you even touch this onto that plate, you got to turn it around, label it with the name of the stuff. you got to take the lid off after you turn it around. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> yeah, that would probably be good. And then turn it at a 90 degree angle. So, you can start from the side right here, and you go all the way down with the swab. After you do that, you put this in your biohazard bag so nothing gets infected. Then my beautiful assistant here will hand me a loop. I will start up here and I will go down sideways, sideways, sideways and all the way to the ends of the petri dish. I'll put that in the biohazard bag and you have to make sure to start with another loop so you don't infect the other stuff so you get correct data and you will go up to down to down make sure to cross through the other stuff and then you have this biohazard bag and you close it up you flip it around and you wait for a couple days for your results your local pharmacy will find fish oil with both DHA and EPA I don't know. Holy cow. Oh, okay, now we're it's done. fish oil. Look! It's got omega. And what's yours got? It's got 180 milligrams of EPA and 900 milligrams of DHA. Aww. Go to a local grocery store and make good omega 3 food choices. Oh, I know where that is, guys. Come on, let's go. It's right around this corner. Look! There it is! What a coincidence! We were standing right next to it. So we went shopping and this is what we found. On the top we have what we think is healthy and on the bottom what we think is not so healthy. So salmon, this salmon is really healthy because it says on the back, wild caught. We know it was raised in the wild and not on like corn oil and stuff. Lettuce, is, there's not a lot to it. It's gotta be healthy. <laughs> Same with peppers, peppers are always good. And then squash, whoever likes it, you know. <laughs> and green beans. And next we have on our bottom, we have sunflower seeds. These are really bad for you actually. American sliced singles. I don't really like these, they kind of taste like plastic. Okay, so the tuna is actually pretty healthy by itself, but this has olive oil in it, which isn't very good for you in the omega 3 omega 6 ratios. And then cheese dogs. Guys. I don't know! Okay. It's safe!
Yes, you win! Congratulations to me! And them. <laughs> What's in it? Thank you so much. Thank you. No, that one goes to Calvin, but whatever. Calvin, you've won third place, but whatever. Thank, Thank you, Bio Science Montana! Hallelujah! 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 I have something to say. Okay. I wasn't allowed to touch any food in that cart during the time we were at the grocery store. I wasn't allowed to, so. Because, <laughs> yeah, they were mean. Okay, I have stuff to read to you guys on paper. Do you have a PowerPoint? Do we have a PowerPoint? Yeah. Okay, yes. I would like that very much. Please. Okay, as you can see, that says words on there. As you can see, we're having minor difficulties. Okay, we fixed it. Okay. <coughs> Optical illusions are tricking the brain into thinking something is there that really isn't. People taste food differently. Some people are super tasters. Their taste buds are especially sensitive. To be a super taster it is genetic and inherited. How people feel and perceive touch is different. Our hum humunculus mass showed that not everyone is the same. Our senses can be damaged. For example, hearing if exposed to loud noises. I have an infectious disease summary. Bacteria are different from viruses. They both cause disease, and bacteria, but bacteria can produce toxins. To test for bacteria, swab a plate, and then use two different inoculating loops to complete the streaking process. Bacteria can be grown selectively. On certain petri dishes, lactose can be fermented to help identify bacteria by dyes in the auger. Antibiotics are used to select for or stop bacteria from growing. Catalase and gram stain tests are important for ident in identifying different kinds of bacteria. In our microbiology projects, UV light killed bacteria up to five feet away and bacteria did not grow on damp co cotton balls suspended in the classroom. Okay, I have the metabolomic summary. So first, fats play a positive role in our diets. It is important to have good omega-3, omega-6 ratios. An ideal ratio is one to one. The typical American, for the typical American, the ratio is 20 to one, it's not healthy. Higher amounts of omega-3s in a person's diet will improve brain function and health. However, too many omega-3s can cause the immune system to weaken. Too many omega-6s in the diet may cause inflammation and pain. Omega-3s and omega-6s are converted into powerful hormones, which is how they affect our bodies. You can take omega-3 supplements daily to change your ratio. You can also eat foods with high omega-3s, such as fish, flax, or chia. Our omega-6, omega-3 ratios when tracking diets through chronometer were 4 to 1, 5.5 to 1, 7 to 1, and 8.5 to 1. Thank you guys. Do you have any questions? Yes. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about your um, experiment with bacteria in the classroom? Um, that would be Ryan's. What? What kind of experiment did you do in the classroom? Okay, well, I sort of like tied a bunch of cotton balls to string and hung it from the ceiling in the corner of my social studies classroom for about four periods. And, um, and we were, and they were wet, so then 
the bacteria would stay alive a little bit longer than it would if it was dry, because then they'd die, and then, yeah. And so, we put it on Petri dishes in period four, and that was kind of hard, because it was a long time-ish, so. And then we got done. What and were your results? Well, there was a red dot on the Petri dish. It was very red. Was that it? Yep. Did you have it? Did you <laughs> I did uh, <coughs> put staff on a swab and then put it, it sh shown a UV light from six feet or six inches, one foot, two foot, three feet, and four feet, out to five feet. And the bacteria didn't grow, or it was, it didn't grow as much on the control out to five feet as it did. So that we just used a little basic UV light that you can go over the uh, law. It's meant for traveling, but you can take them. Okay. So yes. What about you? Uh, you had some hypotheses about the uh, differences, in the, uh, the basis for the differences in the facial uh, homunculi. Did you have to do with sinus infections? What was that? Um, so with the sinuses, Caitlin and I both have issues with sinus infections, and I don't know if it would directly affects our um, ability to feel in that area, but we wanted to study that a little more. And then with Ryan's, his ADHD would be really interesting because. I want to say. Okay. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Well, I have ADHD, as you all say, and so I just want to use this actor actually. So, yeah. And I guess I don't know, but it was in the shape of Jesus' cross, so I guess that means I'm special. <laughs> and Tracy's not that thing. Okay. And so. <laughs> well, so yeah. It. I don't know if ADHD is what causes that, or if I'm just special because it's in the shape of Jesus' cross. Okay, so that, I thought about Ryan's having ADHD and having a lot high sensitivity on his face is that since ADHD has to do with the nervous system, maybe it affects uh, people in other ways. Oh, no way. It actually might be true. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, guys.